All right, everybody, welcome to our Amplazon training today. Um, today we're going to talk about bestseller rank, um, which is, in short, that's, that's a number given to products on Amazon to show you how well it sells relative to other products. But there's some nuances about bestseller rank that I want you guys to know about, and I'm, I'm going to teach you about those high level, and then we'll talk about kind of how that applies to some of our Amazon selling strategies, more particularly how that applies to um, any of our arbitrage, whether it be wholesale or, or uh, retail arbitrage work. Um, bestseller rank tells us a lot. And if you don't understand that metric very well, you're likely going to struggle in a lot of your sales on Amazon. So we want to make sure it's crystal clear to you guys how it works. So first of all, I'm on this page here, and I'm just going to copy this URL so you guys have a copy of it here. I'll just put it in our little notes section right here. Amazon.com slash GP slash best sellers. Um, and this, I, you know, not that you'll be using this a lot, but I think this will be helpful just to kind of illustrate the point as to what Amazon best sellers are. So what happens is Amazon has a bunch of uh, high level departments, right? And you can, if you're looking on my screen right now, um, you can see any department and then it's going to show you all of these different departments going down this list, right? These are like their top level, main level um, departments. And um, the way bestsellers rank is, each department has its own set of rankings. So if you look with me here uh, on, this main, on this main page, you've got a category called uh, Toys and Games right here. And it's going to list, starting at number one, number one being the most popular item on Amazon in the Toys and, game cat, or in the toys and Games category on down the line. Um, electronics, camera and photo, video games, so on and so forth, okay? So each category has its own set of rankings. So if something is the third most popular product in toys and games, this item right here, um, it, it it's just the third most popular in toys and games. It doesn't mean it's the third most popular on Amazon as a whole. Everything's broken down into categories, okay? Furthermore, um, let me just delete this, okay? If I click on, say, um, let's go down here to, kit, uh, yeah, home and kitchen. Okay, so if I click on home and kitchen, which is a top level category here, home and kitchen, you're going to see below it, there's a number of subcategories, right? You've got some different subcategories below it. And so within, within each subcategory, ha they have their own sets of rankings. So Amazon does this literally with every single category and every single product. And you can kind of see it all organized in one here in this Amazon bestsellers list. Not again, not that you'll use that. I've actually had some clients use this to kind of see what what are some of the like literally the most popular items in some of these categories just to maybe give them an idea. Um but beyond that, I don't think it's going to be something you're going to use a whole lot of, okay? Let's just find a random product here on Amazon. Um let's and and I haven't pre-selected anything, so maybe I'll scroll down here and see if we can just find something at random here. Um, let's click on this little pink uh, Casio watch. Um, anytime you're looking at a product, right? <clears throat> this one, I just pulled out of the hat. Let's say we had a supplier for this item and we're trying to decide, hey, is this going to be a good item to sell on Amazon? Of course, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look at under the product description um, what what your best seller rank looks like for this item. Okay. And the format might look a little different on my screen than it does on yours, but it should be relatively the same. Let me grab a red pen so I can point out the area for bestseller rank. Looks like it's right here. And I'll just circle this whole thing, okay? Now, according to this, it doesn't have just one seller rank, does it? It has this one, this one, and this one. 
it has three cellar ranks. And maybe I can, let me put that those in different colors. Because this, this I, I really need you guys to understand this point. Um, let's use a, a dark green color here. So I'm going to underline these. That, that, and that. So according to this, it's it's the 272nd, 1,771 um, most popular item in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry main category. Okay? But beyond that, you'll see below, it's the 2,128th most popular in clothing, shoes, and jewelry subcategory women, subcategory watches, subcategory wristwatches. And then it's the 150,384th most popular item in um, clothing, shoes, and jewelry, women, and then shops. Here's the issue here. We, we typically, when we're evaluating a product, we don't look at anything that's, that shows subcategory rank. So this one and this one, which are clearly subcategory ranks, and you know they are because they're using this, these little caret symbols, right? These are these are subcategory ranks. So this is not the the 2,128th most popular in clothing, shoes, and jewelry. It's it's only the 2,128th most popular in wristwatches. The problem is, in with the tools that are out there, we can't make any sense of that data. Okay, the main reason why you guys are using sales rank and we're even looking at it and evaluating it is to see how popular the product is and how many units sell per month, right? Because I'm never ever going to invest in inventory that, that I don't know will sell or how quickly it'll sell, right? We, we, don't, we don't guess at things on Amazon, right? I don't care if this looks like a cool pink watch that you think should be selling. We, we don't invest unless we know it is selling. And the only metric for us to really use to, to, to really uh, accurately estimate what sales are going to look like is going to be that best seller's rank, but not for subcategories. So if you ever see an item that has a low sales rank or best seller rank, um, but it's in a subcategory, don't look at the subcategory ranks. I'm going to cross these off right here. Okay? The only one that you can look at and make any sense of in, in this product is this one right here. And why is that? Well, it's because it's in a top-level main category. And you know that because you'll usually see this out to the right of it. It'll say, see top 100 in clothing, shoes, and jewelry. You know it's a top-level category when it shows something like that. And, and notice it doesn't have any of those little carrot symbols, right? So you know it's not a subcategory. This is a main category. I've got so much chicken scratch on this. Let me erase all of that so you don't have to look at it all. So this is the one we care about right here. Um, and, and again, the reason why that is is there's no other tools for us to use to measure sales rank that apply to subcategories. All the tools out there only work with uh, with with this one right here. Now. When you know that this item has a, a 200,000 or 272,771 uh, sales rank, what do we do with that data? How do we know, or how do we how do we translate that into monthly sales, right, for this item? Well, you've you've probably seen coaches recommend this before. Your best estimator for this, in my opinion, is. Uh, fbatoolkit.com. So in our notes here, let me just make a note of that. Um, I'm going to call it fbatoolkit.com. And then just as a note here, we're going to say important. Only sell items that have a top level sales rank, right? Top level meaning what? Not a subcategory, right? Does that make sense, guys? Are there questions about that, or are you guys following along? Okay, there. Because here's the thing: tools that are out there, like this FBA toolkit, um, what we would do with this particular item 
is we, we'd say, okay, it's 272,771. So I'm going to copy that number. Um, and it's in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category. And I'm going to look for that here on FBA Toolkit. See if we can find it listed here as an option. I don't see it yet. No, nope, they may not list it as an option. If they don't, if it's not one of these listed here on FBA uh, FBA Toolkit, then we won't we won't touch it. Yep, I don't see it. Let's go over here to this one right here. This is the other one that we'll use. This is Jungle Scout um, forward slash estimator. This one has the clothing, shoes, and jewelry. Um, it's really odd that it doesn't have it in FBA Toolkit. But it is looking like it doesn't which is okay because there's other there's other estimators so this one right here is the jungle scout.com slash estimator we can click on uh, clothing shoes and jewelry and then i just paste in the sales rank right here and i click that find out now how many sales um, that's yielding and in this case it says 29 sales right so you see that so i plugged in the number there estimated sales per month 29 okay now, why, why is that information valuable? Well, right, you're not wanting to pick products that aren't selling, right? I mean, in, in the world of, of buying products and have them sold on Amazon, you want to buy stuff that you can move. And a good rule of thumb for all of you guys to follow is, you know, every whatever you buy, you need to be able to move it within a six-month period, latest. I mean, obviously, you want to buy stuff you can move much quicker than that, but you want to buy stuff that's going to move within six months. Otherwise, you can be subject to you know, higher Amazon fees and that'll eat into your margins. So you need to make sure that the inventory you purchase, you make sure it gets sold in six months. And this is the first step to determine how quickly that inventory will move, okay? Now there's there's 29 that, that sell per month. Now is this is this a number that I can fully count on that's gonna be absolutely perfect? Probably not, right? I mean, this is this is an estimate. We don't, nobody knows exactly how many are selling. These tools do a really good job of estimating, um, which is why I try to check a couple of different tools. Um, Jungle Scout seems to be a little more on the uh, optimistic side, I feel like, with their estimates. FBA Toolkit is a little more on the conservative side with their estimates. So. In, in a case like this, I couldn't get numbers in both places. But if I were able to, Jungle Scout gives me one number, FBA Toolkit gives me another number, I'm gonna probably err on the side of the, the more conservative of the two. Um, the other thing you can do too is, uh, I'm a big fan of Keepa.com. Some of you guys have probably heard us talk about this. We, we use it a lot. I recommend clients to use it. Um, and I'm going to go to the search bar right here and I'm going to go grab the item from Amazon's ASIN, which is listed right here under the product information. And I'm just going to paste that in over onto um, Keepa. So let's do that real quick. So we can take a look at some of the data here. Um, and then I really like this tab right here. It's called uh, Statistic on Keepa. So you can see it's kind of at the, the bottom part of the, the graph here, right? I roll my mouse over that. And then you see at the bottom right-hand side, it shows um, per month sales right there. So you're looking at about 31 per month. It's, it's estimating are, are being sold. How does that compare to Jungle Scout? Jungle Scout was 29. So Keepa says 31 a month. Jungle Scout says 29, and we're not getting any data from FBA Toolkit. So what's, my, what's gonna be my estimate on this as to how many are selling? Probably somewhere less than 29. 
right? Maybe I'll even be more conservative because I know Jungle Scout is kind of optimistic. Maybe I'll say worst case, you know, 20 or selling a month or whatever. Okay. All right. So sales rank tells us how many are selling per month, right? Let me give you an example of where this is hard. Okay. So let's find a product and I'll see, I'll see if I can sort of find something at random here that'll work. Um, let's go to a department or I know what we'll do. Um, I think I saw one of these the other day that, that fit the criteria. You can find products all the time. I'm going to go way back here. Let's, let's dig deep and find a product that probably just doesn't have much sales rank data. So this is kind of a random product, right? Let me scroll down here and look at the product. Yep, this is still this still works. So in this product details, you're seeing here a top level category, 259915. This is a top level sales rank. And then they have a subcategory sales rank. We can't use the subcategory sales rank. That doesn't tell us anything. But we can use this to estimate sales, right? I want to find something where I can illustrate the point I want to make here. Because there there are a number of products, guys, that that just don't have sales rank data. Or the only data that it'll display is going to be a subcategory. So see on this item, there's not any data here. Under product specs and product information, you're not going to see anything on sales rank. And if you ever come across a product that you think might be a good seller but has no sales rank, don't sell it, please. That's that's way too risky. Don't don't do it. If you come across a product that has only subcategory sales ranks displaying, which is really what I'm trying to find here, but I'm not seeing anything. Let's try one more product here. It comes up all the time. It's funny that I can't find one right now. Don't mind me as I scroll around looking for just a sec. Yeah, this doesn't have a sales rank either. Anyway, we'll we'll stumble on one here in just a minute. But let me let me just make a couple of notes so we're all on the same page here, right? So already we've got takeaways. One, only sell top level BSRs. Two Don't even look at subcategory BSRs. See, this is what happens, guys. And this mistake gets made over and over again. I get a client who buys a product. They, they, they don't check it with us. They don't check it with one of my colleagues here. And they, they buy it and then ship it to Amazon. And then it sits there and it doesn't sell, right? And they say to themselves, why isn't it selling? It has a good sales rank. And, and I hear this all the time. And I say, okay, well, give me the ASIN and we'll look up the item. So we look up the item. We go look at the sales rank. And it does have a great sales rank. It's, it's 2,553rd most popular in electronics, headphones, earbuds, some, some super specific subcategory. It doesn't, it doesn't, it just doesn't work, right? It's, it's just not, it's just not going to be something that, that tells us anything. So again, I don't, I don't care if you see low BSRs in subcategories, it's not, you know, it's not going to tell you anything and it doesn't help us. So please be able to distinguish the differences, right? And then once you know what the item subcategory is, or I'm sorry, the, the items BSR is, check it in FBA toolkit, check it in Keepa under the statistics that I showed you. 
and then check it in Jungle Scout. Now, the, the question always comes up, well, do I need to look in all three of those every time? Um, probably not. But would I, if it's something you're serious about, that you're looking to put in several hundred or several thousand dollars in inventory? Probably. Because I want to know the differences, right? And as a sub to this, I'm going to, I'm going to call this 3A. Go with the lowest estimation, right? Right, so if FBA tool gives you one number, Keepa gives you another, Jungle Scout gives you another, look at those three and take the conservative one. And usually, like I said before, this one is gonna give you the most conservative estimate. And why does that matter, guys? Well, if you go with the optimistic estimate, you know, you, there's a chance that it's it's too optimistic and when you get it there, it just doesn't sell as quickly as you want. I mean, this is one of the most important important metrics you'll use when you're when you're choosing inventory. You you have to have a fair estimate. That's your that's your best bet right there. Now, this is kind of beyond the scope of today. This might be something we talk a little bit more about next time. But so it's like, okay, I have my estimate on sales per month. What now? Right? What do I do with that number? Well, just as a just as a clue in, remember if something sells say 30 times a month, does that guarantee you get all those 30 sales? Absolutely not, right? The next step is for you to determine um, buy box rotation. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna write this here. What's the buy box rotation going to be like? In other words, who am I sharing buy box rotation with? How many other sellers qualify? Right, because if there's if there's going to be you know five other let's say four other sellers that are currently selling FBA Prime, they've got they've got uh, rotation, and you're going to be the fifth one selling and getting rotation you're going to have to split those 30 sales up and divide it by five sellers and likely you're not going to get 30 sales a month you're going to get six a month right does that make sense you have to share in those monthly sales assuming you share the buy box with the other qualified sellers so that's kind of the next step here guys so again when when you're in arbitrage mode or you're just in product evaluation mode on Amazon, please, please don't skim over the bestseller rank part. Don't make the common mistake of of accidentally thinking you've got a good sales rank when in fact it's a sales rank of a subcategory. And and then make sure you get a you know, you use these three locations to get your best estimate. Because at the end of the day, all of this talk on sales rank is to, is supposed to drive you to one question answered, and that is how many items of this product of this ASIN are selling per month. It, that's that's what sales rank answers for us. Once you have that number, you take it to the next step and you analyze competition, buy box rotation, and everything else. So I hope that makes sense, guys. I, I there's I think there's more that we can talk about with with sales rank. Uh, Keepa does a really good job to estimate sales rank over time, which I think is valuable, which we, we didn't get a chance to talk about. But um, with this, the, I think this is the one for the little watch that we were looking at earlier. Um, you can use Keepa to see how sales rank has progressed and changed over time. Uh, this is a three month window for this product. If you look down right here, here's your durations, specifically this section right here. So I can change the the line graph. I could change it to all 225 days. This has been on Amazon. And what you'll notice about this particular one is when it was released here back in November. So this hasn't been an, on Amazon very long, right? This is November 2017. It got released. The sales rank went up a little bit, right? And if sales rank is going up, what does that mean? The higher the sales rank, the lower the number of sales are, right? So we don't like 
we don't like high sales ranks. We want lower sales ranks. But it started to drop in December into January. And then it's really kind of leveled out, right? It stayed pretty low since then. But when you're looking at a graph like this, that might be kind of hard to read. So I'm going to bring that back into um, a three-month view. And this is sales rank over the last three months, starting since, you know, early, early mid-March, right? So, and you can see sales rank is over here on this axis. So here's the 50,000 mark. I'll draw it all the way along. So you can see it'll pop up above and hit sort of like the 200,000. And then it'll drop down, it'll stay low, and then it comes back up and it drops back down. And this is really common of a sales rank. It's a little on the high side right this second. So what's interesting is if you're making your estimates based on this historical data right here, and, and we said the sales rank you know, was around that 250,000 mark, which according to our, our tools told us about 30 sales or so a month. Um, that's probably not totally accurate, right? Like on average, it's been much better than that. And uh, so one thing you can look at is you come down here to the statistic um, overlay and and you can see the average sales rank over the past 90 days is 72,921. The average sales rank over the last 180 days is 123,730. Current sales rank is about 272,000. So it's it's definitely on the high side. Now, now does that mean it's going to come back down to those averages? No, it doesn't it doesn't mean that it has to do that, but if if the past is any indication of the future, my guess is it probably will because it's done this several times in the past. So I, I would assume more sales than just that 30 a month. And and then you could take this average number and plug that into those other tools and get, get a better idea of what the average sales would be instead of this this high peak that that it's at right now. So anyway, we can dig into that more another time, but guys, I hope this is helpful. I mean, this is, this is a, a, I mean, it's a fundamental part of being a good seller on Amazon. You have to understand sales rank on a, on a better level than I've noticed some of our clients have. And so this is some of the core stuff you guys need. So let me give you a minute. If, if you've got any questions, please ask. I've noticed you guys have been awfully quiet during the presentation and that's fine. Um, Maybe I'm just so clear that no questions are coming to your head, but I, I somehow I doubt that's the case. <laughs> so go ahead and ask if you've got any. I'll just put myself on hold for a minute. And then if not, we'll finish up, and then we'll see you guys again here in a few weeks. Again, remember, the next one is slated to go on the 20th, and uh, that'll be one of my colleagues, Davin. He'll be hosting that one. So I'll put myself on hold, and, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, guys. Well, if not any questions, then we, we're glad you came, and uh, we will see you all next time. Thanks for sticking around.